This is Aspire One. The inspiration behind Aspire One is to design and build a fully 3D printed rocket body at home. The electronics, dual stage deployment, as well as the pyrotechnic testing, everything from the ground up. And it's built on a smaller frame specifically for the reason that not everybody has access to certified designated sites where you're allowed to fly high powered rocketry, but we don't need that. There's no reason why we cannot explore and build and test and reiterate different designs on a smaller rocket body that runs on A to G size black powder motors, especially when considering the collective knowledge that has actually been made available on the internet. So let's get started. If everything you just saw is something that you're interested in and you know about 3D printing, then you probably know about this guy and rockets you probably know about this guy and a homemade rocket engines you probably know about this guy so why these three channels specifically well stefan from cnc kitchen has done a brilliant job in showing us as to what type of materials is actually used for which type of projects and it's never been easier to actually build something structural and with some sound engineering behind it at home and with, with channels like stefan's joel from Integza and Joe from BPS Space, it's easy to see why you can get excited about this sort of projects. All the information is right there at your fingertips and it's just a question of applying it. you can imagine in a 40 millimeter tube especially having a 36 inch ripstop parachute and then we got to pyrotechnic testing I tested small charges which wasn't injured enough and <laughs> slightly more on the energetic side let's take another closer look in slow-mo now the one good thing though from this test was that it was proven that the body itself can actually carry that pressure inside while ejecting the chute and I certainly won't be using this much charge in the future but it did prove the point. There you can sort of see the inside of the tube, it's perfectly still intact and I suspect it's due to the design of the tube which is the ribbing. And just as a reminder this is just an overview of what we will be yeah. covering in the next few weeks in detail in the videos. All source files as well as design files will be available for you to design and build your own and modify as 
as you please. So, from looking at the test results, the parachute itself didn't come off too bad. There were some marking, but overall, no damage was really caused. So, I was happy with that test. And due to that test, we had to print a new nose cone, and I decided for this nose cone, we were actually printing it in a PC plus or polycarbonate plus, which is a very strong but brittle material, so the walls had to be made a bit thicker. And then eventually it was on to actually attaching this nose cone to the body using a nylon coated steel braided wire. The steel braided wire wasn't really the best choice, but it's nice and stiff and has less chances of, of tangling on itself. Worked fine for Now, generally it's not advised to solder your microcontroller straight into a prototype board like I'm doing here, but I was kind of in a rush and I didn't have the connectors. This entire project pretty much came to life within seven days from concept all the way through to the supposed launch date. Um, so I wasn't really fussed about anything that could potentially go wrong because anything that would go wrong would make me miss the deadline. And
the guiding rails as well as structural strength. As you can see in a minute here, the actual payload bay slides in very nicely down this body tube. And the way it's been designed is the all the sections of the body actually fit together with a connector interface and little 2mm screws. Now, moving forward for the STEM rocket project, which we'll discuss in a minute, um, that actually took me a considerable amount of time to come up with a interbody connection portion that's bi-directional. In other words, you can flip it either way and it could connect to the adjacent body part. And that was really for the purpose of being able to adjust and modify different pieces of the rocket and exchange it fairly easily without having to rebuild or redesign the entire rocket. But anyway, onto the parachute tube and that was the little baffle so the black powder charge would actually sit underneath that baffle. There you can see the igniter. And the parachute slid in with the new nose cone ready for installation on top of the rocket. Here's just a little clip of how the parachute was folded as well as the um, connection between the nose cone and the body. So it was quite a mission but it fit in there fairly snug and as you saw from the pyrotechnic charge they had no problem getting launched out of the system so I had no worries there. There you can see the sort of flap deployment and its final orientation. Had some trouble with the last one just catching on the edge but I had to just grind off a little bit and it all seemed to be fine. And you can sort of see the operation of the flap deployment system at Apogee. There you can see one of the little screw holes that's just used to connect the interbody sections and I just used a 6mm drill bit to countersunk the plastic so that the screws um, sit nice and flush with the body. And with that, she was done. and maybe the share button if you think of anybody else that might enjoy this type of content let's quickly have a look as to what is next for this project the stem rocketry project and a brief look at anox one the official flight computer that will be available to any of you to build buy or copy and replicate yourself And as always, my name is Johan, and remember, if you're not learning something new every day, you are certainly not progressing.